Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Why do gorillas eat so much protein? If you're a fan of mine or a friend of mine, you know I'm very, very, very fond of gorillas. I mean, I love studying the animal kingdom in general. But my two favorite animals are obviously the lion and the silverback gorilla. I love those two animals and I've researched them for years. Not just for hypertrophy reasons, but mainly for behavioral things, evolution, things like that. But for those who are unaware, gorillas eat a ton of protein, you know, which is which is actually funny because most people actually believe it's the opposite. Most people think, hey, look at gorillas, they have a lot of muscle and they don't eat a lot of protein, which couldn't be further from the truth. Gorillas eat a ton of protein. And in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly why. All right, so back to the gorilla. Gorillas are extremely powerful animals, extremely powerful creatures, and obviously we share 98% of our DNA with them. So even though appearance-wise there are some differences on a genetic level, we're very fucking similar. But let's look at some stats that will blow your mind. Let's pull out the Vegeta scanner here. Number one, 300. By the way, I'm focusing on silverback gorillas here, so the males. Gorillas weigh about 300 pounds on average. Obviously, some weigh less, some weigh more depending on which species of gorilla we're talking about, but they weigh about 300 pounds on average. In fact, a lot of them weigh a lot more than that, up to 400, and in some cases, even 500 pounds. Next, 3,500. That is the amount of calories the average silverback gorilla burns just by being at rest, right? So that's their BMR, basic metabolic rate. So if a gorilla just sleeps all day and does absolutely nothing, if he goes into a coma, that's the amount of calories it'll burn. And again, the heavier the gorilla, that number can go up to four or 5,000, which is a ton of calories, guys. And that's just to maintain the incredible amount of muscle mass that they actually have. Next, 400. That's the amount of protein gorillas eat on average. 400 grams of protein. Sometimes less, sometimes it goes as high as 500, depending on the time of the year and the foods that are available to them at the time. For those who are not familiar with their eating habits, they eat mainly fruits and vegetables, um, obviously in some cases insects and things like that, but the diet varies from 17% protein all the way up to 30% protein, depending on whether they have access to fruits or not. So, when they're, so during the times of the year when they're eating about 30% of the calories from protein, that number goes up to up to 500 grams of protein a day, right? And during the other months of the year, they're eating around 300 grams. So they're usually around that 400 gram of protein per day uh, mark, which is a lot, right? That's well above, well, roughly above one gram per pound of body weight. And if you watch my video on protein and why I recommend very high protein intakes, no, it's not because of gorillas. You know, watch the video, I go into details. You'll also see that this pattern is consistent throughout the animal kingdom. So the majority of muscular animals, so you have horses, tigers, lions, you know, the majority of muscular animals eat above one gram per pound of body weight of protein, which is very similar uh, to the optimal amount for humans. Now, of course, if you watch that video, I go into details. It's not just about building muscle. You could build muscle eating less protein than that, but it's about maximizing body composition. But again, like I said, just watch the video. 400 grams of protein. Now, of course, that protein mainly comes from vegetables, right? If, if a gorilla went into the supermarket, that's the aisle they'll go to immediately, right? A lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits. In fact, 85% of the calories, 85% of the diet pretty much comes from fruits and vegetables. It's actually 70% vegetables, 15% fruits. And the rest is obviously insects, termites, things like that. But as you can see, they eat a ton a ton of protein again that bmr is 3500 but obviously their daily expenditure is about seven to eight thousand right obviously the bigger the gorilla you know the bigger his tde is going to be but it's roughly about seven to eight thousand calories a day and that's pretty much all they do they spend most of the day eating and sleeping which is very similar again to what humans have to do to get big right eat a lot sleep a lot and obviously we have to train a lot they just have crazy genetics which i'm going to explain why in a minute because a lot of people ask, well, how are gorillas so big if they're barely trained? Well, that coincides with the question of why do they eat so much protein? Well, number one, competition. You got to understand, guys, gorillas are a tournament species, meaning they have to compete for mates. So there's a lot of competition among males for obviously who's going to be the alpha male. And you ask anyone who studied gorillas, any expert on the field, size is the most important factor in deciding who's going to be the alpha male. It's... 
Obviously, it's important in, in throughout the animal kingdom, but for gorillas, it's the number one contributing factor. You will almost never, ever see a small silverback gorilla leading the troop. It's almost impossible. The alpha male is always, always going to be the biggest, 99% of the time. And if you even watch gorillas fight, you see why the physics of size are so important because, again, obviously they have a very strong bite, but a lot of the fighting revolves around just launching their body weights at each other and then trying to knock the other opponent down. Also, being a bigger male actually results in having to fight less because his size alone is enough to intimidate a lot of the guys who are trying to challenge him for the throne. So why do they eat so much protein? How else you think you're going to maintain all that muscle mass, you know? Over 400 pounds of bulk, that's a lot of nitrogen, guys. That's a lot of carbon. You got to, you know, they got to get that that protein in. That's just a physiological fact, right? You cannot build insane muscle mass without being in a positive nitrogen balance. And obviously, that's obviously going to come from either having a high caloric intake or having a very, very high protein intake. Also, that's the reason why gorillas are just, you know, the male gorillas uh, are so much bigger than the females, you know, sexual dimorphism, because the bigger male is going to win the majority of battles, and obviously he's going to be able to pass on his genes, because obviously the alpha male is the one that has access to all the females. The second reason why they need so much protein, you know, to be that much bigger is, again, they're predators, right? Gorillas have very, very few predators. In fact, the main one is the leopard, um, mainly hunts on the young. But that's another reason why the gorilla has to be as big and strong as possible. It's obviously a fan of predators. The bigger the gorilla, not only he has an advantage in fighting the lepers, but again, just that intimidation factor. You know, his size alone um, wards off the enemies. And that's one of the biggest advantages in Animal Kingdom by being, of being big. You know, just the size alone makes it so that they actually have to fight less just because of the intimidation factor. And the third most important reason why gorillas need all that protein to have to carry all that mass is obviously sexual selection. The females themselves, when given a choice, actually prefer the bigger male, you know, which is the same in humans. Well, not all the time, but you know what I mean. And um, throughout the animal kingdom, the females, when given the opportunity, always go for the big male. Not only because, again, he's going to help ward off other, um, other males, because just like lions, when a, when a new silverback takes over a, a troop, he actually kills the infants. So, obviously, a female wants to obviously pass on her genes, so she wants a strong silverback who's going to be able to protect her and her offspring. So, the females are genetically wired to go after the bigger male. And the second reason is obviously the fact that the genes, right? If you go for the bigger male, then chances are he's going to pass on his strong genes to your offspring, which is also going to increase his chances of survival and reproduction. So that's the third reason why, uh, you know, gorillas need silverback gorillas need that much protein to carry that much muscle mass. You know, it's I mean, just look at him getting his business on. She's like, oh my god, Bobby. But yeah, so those are the three main reasons. Number one, for competition, they need that, that muscle mass for to, you know to all of other males. Uh, second reason is obviously to fight off predators, mainly the leopard. And third reason is because the bigger gorilla has the highest chance of passing on his genes, you know, just, just from sexual selection alone. Yeah, how does that apply to us? It's useless unless we can actually draw lessons from it, right? How does that apply to us in our fitness journeys? It's the same, guys. The same thing throughout the board. You're trying to get big, number one, you cannot ignore protein. It's the most important macronutrient. Now, of course, like I said, it has a slightly inverse correlation with your caloric intake, so... If you're eating less protein, you can still build muscle as long as your calories are high. Because obviously, higher calories means you're going to have less nitrogen breakdown. But if you're, cal if you're on maintenance or your calories are low, you definitely need to increase your protein intake. Which is why I always, always recommend um, higher protein. All right, so that's the two biggest takeaways. You cannot avoid the fact that size comes with protein intake and caloric intake. For those guys out there who are eating 1500 calories a day because they're obsessed with their six pack and they're constantly wondering why they're not putting on enough size yeah and like i always say yes you could build muscle in a deficit but you're not going to maximize muscle mass eating in a deficit or a maintenance that's just not going to happen you're not going to go from 140 to 180 eating 1500 calories i'm sorry it's just physiologically impossible but anyway guys hope this video helps shout out to car track over here for providing a great selfie for this video 
All right, guys, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell. Visit my website and grab a copy of my ebook and training program. Go to www.team3dalpha.com and don't forget to use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus Overload.